Can you explain what a photon is at several levels of difficulty, i.e. to a child, a teenager and a grad student? So if I had one of each in front of you, okay. what's a photon, Professor Copeland? To, to a child first. So you see the light that's coming from that, shining from there, and it's, com it's coming into your eyes. That light is made up of photons, small little packets that are, that are coming down to us all the time. So that's, that's a photon is just allows that light to come down to you. It's made up of lots of little packets. A photon to a child, um, it's like a little ball of light, I would say. Tiny, tiny, tiny little ball of light, okay? Oh, that's cute. Yeah. You've got a teenager now. A particle of light. I would say, I would say that's the difference. A, a, it's a particle of light. To a teenager, they, they, they've probably learnt a little bit about quantum mechanics. They might have just have, are beginning to do it at school. So for a teenager, what I can tell you is that if I shine a, um, a beam of radiation into um, a surface of a material, and then what I can do is that atom in the, in the, that it's shining into is made up of energy levels. And the electrons in those energy levels, they can jump up. And when they jump up the level, they've gained energy. And we all know teenagers are very lazy. They want to be in the lowest energy possible. So the, the electrons drop back down. And in dropping down, that energy that's been absorbed is emitted. And it's emitted as a package. And that package is the photon. That's precisely the photon. And depending upon what, how big that energy gap is, that tells you the wavelength of the photon. So it determines its colour. So it tells you whether it's yellow or it's red or it's green, depending upon that. And that is called the photoelectric effect. And that is what Einstein got his Nobel Prize for, not for relativity. And for a graduate student, OK, well, the idea of the photon is there. For a graduate student, I represent the photon through what's called a wave function. And it's a solution to Schrodinger's equation, for example. And that photon has certain properties associated with it. It's got a size where the wave function peaks. That tells you where it's most likely to be. And as it drops down, that's where it's not going to be anymore. But it's also got a spin. And it's got an internal spin associated with it. It's quantum numbers. So it's got this size represented by the wave function and the probability of it being somewhere given by the basically the wave function squared, but the spin is what defines it as being the photon, and it's got an integer spin for a photon, whereas a fermion, the electron, has a half integer spin. The photon is a boson, and it has an integer spin. Well, it's the, it's the quantum of light. That's what it is. It's literally the quanta. Every particle, every, every field has air fluctuations, quantum fluctuations. There's the quanta associated with them. In the case of a photon, it's the quanta of the electromagnetic field. Analytic continuation of things like black holes, but that doesn't mean there's actually a way through to them. That there, you know, I don't think there's necessarily a, a sort of physical process which is going to help you generate a white hole.